We're on the hunt for a VW motor. Tight, but we're gonna get there. No trailer queen here. Okay, somewhere in one of these trailers. Woo, you guys are zoomed in. In one of these trailers is our prize. I don't know if it's behind door number one, two, or three. I'm gonna go with door one and uh, if I figure out which one it is, we'll uh, see shortly. Yeah, we're gonna go see if it's in door number one. Oh, there it is. It is right here. I know you guys can't see a damn thing because of the darkness, but that right there is a VW motor and transmission. So you gotta go dig our way into that. All right. Yeah, we're gonna have to split that engine and transmission. Got a new muffler on it. Got a Beetle muffler on it. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna make a hole. All right, that, we need to get separated from that. Ow, it! It's a part. That's been together for a while. Now the easy part, we gotta get that. Way the hell out there to the truck. Got this little parking spot here. That's why it pays that big friends. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> now we gotta get the motor. That's two of us. You guys look straight in. in the daylight. Got a nice purdy new muffler on it. Made in Germany. Not even a piece of crap. And the code on the motor is it's like B5 I think. It's 
something B5, isn't it? FB? Is there something in front of that or no? <laughs> yeah, B5. So I am thinking it's got the setup, the mustache bar on it. And that would be bus 68 through 70 because 71 I think is a dual port. So it's either 68, a 69, or a 70 bus motor. Huh. That wasn't so bad now, was it? <laughs> yeah, we just gotta go pay for it and bring our prize home. All right, put the uh, engine and trains back together and just shoved two bolts in it and now I got my jumper pack on it and uh, ran power to the starter. So I'm gonna go cross it with a screwdriver and we'll see if it cranks over. Uh, it's low on oil, but it's got oil in it. And uh, we just start doing the assessment and see what we got. Some sort of compression. I don't know how well my jumper pack's gonna hold out. Uh, let's put a little spark checker on it, see if we got spark. of plug. I'm gonna go get a uh, spark plug socket. We'll pop that out of there and uh, see what we got. Alright, I would suspect the points to be dirty and not have spark, but uh, we're just gonna approach it this way just for fun to see what we get. I don't see nothing. So, uh, I'm gonna go uh, pop the cap open and we'll look inside there. Let's see what that looks like. Doesn't even look like they're opening. All right, so I'm gonna go get me a file, I'll go clean some of that up, and uh, see if we can get Spark to return. All right, give us a quick little file. Let's see what we get now. That works for me. Sparking. Let me just dump a little fuel in it, see if it just goes and runs and dies. Uh, it doesn't seem tight at all, so I'm not that worried about putting oil down the cylinders, but we'll put some two-stroke gas in it just for a little bit of lube. And we'll get that plug back in there and get some fuel down the throat, see if it sputters. Two-stroke. Good stuff. All right, so we'll give that a little, a little tickle down the carb. And dump some in the, uh, the float ball, too. There's a mouse nest in the exhaust. <laughs> Sound a little clunky when it started. Battery back off. I'm gonna dump some uh, oil in it. I know it's low, but it's still reading on the stick. I'm gonna dump some oil in it and uh, run it a little bit, and uh, we'll see if we can get it to run a little bit. Maybe I'll pull the top off that carb and. Uh, See what the inside of that looks like, and maybe you can put it on a on a jug. 
you can keep it running. All right, back in a minute. All right, I didn't clean the carb up, but as you can see over there, there's a gas can coming going down to it. I figure we're just gonna go for it, see what happens. Still, I'm just skipping. I'm gonna go adjust the valves. about that it needs work but at least it does run so I'm gonna go uh, adjust the valves real quick and see if it uh, will kind of smooth out a little bit and uh, maybe regain a little bit more composure you can hear one cylinder skipping a beat you know plus everything on all the tune-up parts are absolutely dust nothing is uh, the fuel line just wants to turn into you know that's the fuel line everything on it is I would say this thing's been sitting at least 20 years you know pretty much turned back into carbon so uh, that's good though it's uh, I, I would figure that it, they probably removed it from a, a rusty bus and uh, didn't want you know if it was a, the motor was junk they wouldn't have went through the trouble of pulling out and saving it so that's what I was figuring and I knew I was able to turn it by hand uh, from the pulley when I looked at it about six months ago all right I'm gonna go uh, adjust the valves and then uh, see if you can get that thing to kind of purr a little bit better be back Hey, okay, just the valves on the other side and uh, this is the, the notorious cylinder that gets hot all the time and the intake valve's got some play the exhaust valve is tight though so uh, I have a feeling that's a cylinder that was skipping a beat and hopefully when I open that up that'll come back and uh, won't be skipping anymore we'll see how that one is too but worst case scenario I do have some single port cylinder heads and uh, this is a 1600 not a 1500 uh, buses got a uh, they got the bigger motors before the bugs did so back then uh, I think the Beatles had a, a 15 and then uh, again the buses have the 16 so uh, let's uh, go crack them loose and put some play in it put the valve covers back on and we'll spin it up one more time and see if it sounds any better all right the uh, the there was three valves that were tight on this side so uh, hopefully that should uh, cure our issues and hopefully it didn't do too much damage to it because sometimes when they have tight valves they actually burn the valves so let's see if we can fire this thing up again where's my ratty screwdriver there's my ratty screwdriver we didn't look out of, out of harm's way and let's give her
sounds better. A little tapping loud. By the way, that's popping through the carb as a burnt valve. You can hear it kind of kicking in though. The fire's on it once in a while. Trying. Just running all four at an idle. <laughs> well, I'm going to go get a compression test gauge and go run and do a compression test and see how it is. But in general, there's enough to work with to uh, use as a good motor. I got parts and pieces, but you know, it, it has all the tins, the generator, the carburetor, and uh, voltage regulator, exhaust, heater boxes, all the stuff that I need to put a motor together. And uh, stay tuned because there's a reason for this, but uh, I'll share that with you a little bit later in the week. All right, I went around with a... Um, Test light, as you can see there, and you stab each cylinder, and each cylinder should drop out as you short it out. And uh, number four wasn't doing anything, so I stuck the compression gauge in number four. And uh, fire it back up and see what we get. That one had two uh, exhaust valves, two valves that were tight on it. Pretty much anything under about 80, 90 pounds is not going to be enough to run that cylinder. So that's my problem right there. So we'll see if uh, I, I know I got spare heads and whatnot, and uh, it may just need a, a valve or two replaced on it. But it's good enough bones to work with. All right. Again, thanks for watching. Take care.